Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and my listeners get the secret backstory behind every book. Joining me today is a wonderful children's book author. Her name is Linda Harkey, and she's here to talk about her latest book, Hickory Docks Tales, The Pack, First Generation. Linda loves dogs and teaching children. Her experiences as a mother, a school teacher, a volunteer docent, and a hunting dog owner have inspired her to write the award-winning children's book series, Hickory Docks Tales. She worked as a volunteer docent at two outstanding museums in Oklahoma, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City and the Thomas Gilcrease Institute of American History and Art in Tulsa. During her tenure at the museums, she helped develop curricula for children's programs, and she gave countless presentations to children. Now, Linda's also, in addition to writing seven children's books, she's an award winner. Some of her awards include the 2021 Firebird Book Award for Children's Early Readers, the 2020 International Book Awards Finalist for Children's Fiction, the 2019 Purple Dragonfly Book Contest, first place in Animals and Pets, the 2019 American Fiction Award, finalist in Juvenile Fiction, 2019 American Book Fest Best Book Awards, finalist Children's Educational, and the 13th Annual National Indie Excellence Award finalist. Linda, what a resume. Such a pleasure to have you as a guest today on Books on Air. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for asking me, Suzanne. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I have to tell you, and I don't tell anybody, but I have this this real soft spot in my heart for children's book authors. I think that they are extraordinary, special people, because not only do you have to have an idea for a book, and not only do you have to be able to bring that idea down so that children can understand it, but if they, they're not interested, then what difference does it make? Children's book authors have the most amazing qualities. They're able to take that information, make it children-friendly, and make it interesting, and make it something that children want. So I am in awe of what you do, Linda. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Bless you. Let, let's travel I'm back. I'm pleased to be here. Well, it's just, it's so much fun for me to talk to people like you. I want to travel back in time a little. Let's go back to when you were young. Now, authors begin to write for a lot of different reasons. Some authors will be a reader, and a particular book will inspire them, and they'll begin to write. Or sometimes there's a teacher or a professor, and they assign a paper, and all of a sudden they recognize some spark in a student, and they'll encourage that writing spark that they see. Sometimes writers write because there's a a seminal event that happens in their lives that inspires them, and they, they feel like they have to share that event. What's the story behind Linda Harkey? How did you first start writing? Um, Well, Suzanne, I've always loved animals, and I think one of the reasons I started writing many years ago was because my husband and I started collecting, not collecting, but we began to have a lot of hunting dogs. He loved to go out and hunt um, with the dogs themselves, and to me, um, not only with the teaching background that I had, but also the love of the animals that I have. I wanted to do, I wanted to write down some of those situations so that children could enjoy the books and still they would have life lessons through the books and they would learn about people and animals and everything else in life. And that's kind of where I started. I started many years ago. Um, and I've just carried it on and on. So you were initially drawn to writing children's fiction? Yes, absolutely. I think that's so interesting. Books always have two stories. There's the story that the reader gets from the book. Now, I've, I've read the first book, and 
I really noticed some things about the characters, and I'm curious about how that first book came to be. How did Hickory Dock's tales come into being? Where did those dogs come from? Well, they were our dogs, and sometimes we would have five and six of them. And the very first book, Doc is a main character, and Doc is composed of two of our short hair pointers. One was Bud and one was Rocky. And then Zeke, the next character, which is actually um, Doc's younger brother, he's the one that always was so sophisticated in, in a way. I mean, he always thought he was better than Doc. And when you deal with animals and when you see different things that they do, it's fun to try and put it into a book. I wanted the memory of the animals, if you want to the honest truth. Um, my animals mean a lot, and each and every one of them that we've had has has always, you know, done a great deal of things. I've, we had one that was a three-legged dog, and Deacon loved to chew the binding <laughs> off a book. And I always, you know, I, I mean, I'm serious about this. He chewed the binding off hunting books. He chewed the binding off of my art books when I was a docent at the museum. <laughs> at the museum. And so in one of the books, I've actually got a little saying from Deacon. He says, that's the way, you know, you can learn about books by simply chewing off the binding. <laughs> so, and it is, you know, and those are, there are so many funny experiences with the dogs and, and humorous experiences. And with the children, um, many years ago when I did, when I was a docent, we, Enter not entertained, I should say, but we had all of the first graders, Gilcrease Museum, in the summertime, we would sponsor all the first graders that came through. And it was actually through the school year, too. And it was called Any Given Child Program. And through those children, those first graders, when I would put them in front of a painting, I could use both um, their visual acuity, if you want to say, say that, and also just having them write the story through the paintings. And so that's sort of what I like to do. And I like to do, I love to go to schools, and we'll walk through the book. In other words, we'll take a walk through one of my books that we're reading. And I actually have the children go from corner to corner, and we'll talk about a certain portion of the book, and I will have a visual um, illustration for them, so to speak, Suzanne. So I like to kind of combine all of that. One of the things I really liked, it's so funny that you're talking about this, because one of the things I really liked was in the description of the pack, I took note of, of several things. First of all, how specific the descriptions were of each particular dog. And there are eight dogs in the pack. Each one of the dogs is very individual. Each one has a particular personality quirk or a particular personality characteristic. And I, I loved that. And it's eight dogs, one crow, and two humans, <laughs> which I just thought was great. Bless your heart. Let's talk well, about... Willie the Crow. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Willie the Crow is a very interesting um, crow. We had um, a friend um, that we knew, and she actually had a crow that would come into the house and peck on the refrigerator door, and then she would give the crow. And I'm, this, is an, this is a true story. Crows are really smart. So I took that idea and made Willie the Crow one of the good friends of the dogs because children, children are the kind that love everybody. I mean, they love all kinds of friends. And so my dogs also love all kinds of friends, such as a crow, Willie the Crow. There's an armadillo in one of the stories, and he's a pretty smart armadillo, as a matter of fact. And then there's, there's also a uh, skunk, and there's also Pete the porcupine. So I've tried to use animals just as children would have good friends in some of their experiences. And because I had so many dogs, we like I say, we've had over 30 dogs in our lifetime. Each dog, if you're with dogs, our dogs can go in and out of the house. They're like, they are our family. 
quite honestly. And so I know their personalities. I could tell you a story about um, oh, Nass, uh, one of our dogs, um, Nassau. We had two black labs at to- different times, Newt and then Nassau. Nassau loved uh, deviled eggs, and so did Bud, which is Dot, and also Zeke. And so one day in the kitchen, and this is a true story, one day in the kitchen, and I've also put it in a book, but one day in the kitchen, I was giving the dogs deviled eggs. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I came to the last deviled egg. And that did something, because all three dogs started fighting in the kitchen. Oh, and so no. it was, you know, <laughs> and that, is a, that is a true story. I did not have um, um, garden hose like to you know, calm them down by turning it on. And so we had, it was quite, uh, it was quite an ordeal. And in the story, I I have the dogs going to the vet and they have those, um, I don't know what you call those little things around them. They're collars. And the dogs have to learn to deal with that for a while. So there's, there are so many stories, Suzanne. And if, and if your audience and or you have had animals um, you're very familiar with things that they do. And a lot of their characteristics are similar to people. You're absolutely right. And I couldn't agree with you more. You become so attached to an animal, we all personify them. You know, it's funny. I've started during this pandemic, I think I've watched more television than I've ever watched. And I have to say that I've discovered all of those shows on the animal planet the zoo shows and the um, veterinarian shows that talk about, you know, and so everyone, every single person, when the zookeepers talk about the animals in the zoo, they talk about them in terms of endearment, and they talk about exactly what you just said, the individual characteristics of the animals and how it's not just a group of monkeys. It's Mary and Joe and Fred and Sam monkeys. And it's it, the, the same with the veterinarians. And when you see the veterinarians and they talk to the, the people who own the animal, they all say exactly what you just said. It's a member of my family. And you can sometimes the men have been the ones that have just surprised me. There was I saw the other day there was a, a big orange and black and white cat whose name was Baby, believe it or not. And the man who was holding this cat was just distraught because Baby was losing weight and there were these blah, blah, blah wrong with him. And he just... Baby is my baby, and we all feel that way about our animals, and I, I love hearing you say that, and I love the fact that you've taken real stories about your animals and real personalities from your animals and put them in the book. Let's give an overview of what Hickory Dock's Tales really is about. Well, it's got, I've got six chapters, I mean nine chapters. And it's, uh, it's all about each of the dogs actually has a chapter in which, in which I go into more detail with that particular dog. Um, in the very first chapter about Big Bad Carl, um, Doc has a daughter, Patch. And Zeke, his younger brother, is so particular, he doesn't like to get in water. He doesn't like to get money. But in the story... Zeke goes and helps Patch. And to make a long story short, the children are going to learn life lessons, uh, good and bad, and basically how they're supposed to act, you know, react. They learn that from each of the stories. And I think if I were to say, what is your main thing about your book, Hickory Dock's Tales, I would say it is... Um, the love of the various animals with each other and for each other and with the different circumstances that they're in. Uh, When my husband hunts, and that's one of the things that comes out of here, I don't really talk about the hunting itself because my husband used to, when he hunted birds, it was more about the dogs. It was more about the relationship between the hunter and the animals. And the dogs would get into trouble. They would find skunks. They would do all sorts of stuff. (laughs) And I guess my book is I want children to sit down, and that's elementary school-age children, 